Electric cars have emerged as a transformative force in the automotive industry, ushering in a new era of sustainable transportation. The demand for electric vehicles is expected to keep increasing in the future. As we know, the lithium battery plays a central role in the success and widespread adoption of EVs. But recently, Ford CEO Jim Farley said that battery supply chains could hinder EV development. So, how exactly is it hindering the process? Welcome to Evolutionary. Today, we're going to dive deeper into how crucial batteries are for the EV industry and what challenges they currently face. We can spot electric cars everywhere now. Even companies like Ford are investing hundreds of billions of dollars in electric vehicles. Imagine that huge amount of money. However, as the sector moves towards zero carbon emissions, battery supply chains could hinder those goals. But the question is, how? Let's first hear what Ford CEO Jim Farley said about this matter in an interview with Yahoo Finance Live. First of all, batteries are the constraint here. It won't be the manufacturing site behind me. The lithium-ion batteries that we use, both lithium and nickel, are really the key constraining commodities. We normally get those from all over the world, from South America to Africa to Indonesia and Southeast Asia. We want to localize that here in North America, not just the mining, but the processing of the materials. Farley pointed out that even raw metals mined in the United States are frequently transported back to China for processing which the U.S. is actively trying to change through grants and additional expenditures. The big change is going to be bringing all that processing and mining capability back to the United States, Farley continued. It will be a huge job, just like it has been for semiconductors. According to the International Energy Agency, electric vehicles accounted for around 10% of all vehicle sales globally by 2021. Bloomberg NEF predicts that by 2030, Half of all automobile sales in the United States will be EVs, fueled by Inflation Reduction Act tax incentives. As demand for electric vehicles and trucks grows, there will need to be an estimated 300 million electric cars on the road by 2030 to meet benchmark net-zero targets. Consequently, demand for the valuable minerals used in batteries will also rise. As a result, Global supply chains that harvest and process these minerals may be put to the test. The United States has identified five minerals critical to the EV transition and whose supply chains are currently at risk. Lithium, cobalt, manganese, nickel, and graphite. Already, lawmakers and the mining industry have expressed concerns about mineral supply. Minerals and insufficient supply. There's going to be a real crunch to get the material. Piedmont Lithium CEO Keith Phillips said about lithium mining, Lithium is a crucial component in lithium-ion batteries, the most common type used in the EV sector, and the type used by Ford. The average electric car battery consumes between 8 to 10 kilograms of lithium. We don't have enough resources in the world to turn that much production by 2035, Phillips added. Notably, Demand for lithium-ion batteries is predicted to increase by more than 500% between 2020 and 2030. Although the United States has established some capacity for battery manufacturing, China leads the industry, accounting for more than 70% of global EV battery production capacity. China is the world's largest producer of graphite, another vital mineral used in lithium-ion batteries. However, its greatest strength lies in refining capability. Once raw material is mined, it is sent to processors for purification before being delivered to manufacturers who build the batteries that go into consumer vehicles. In some cases, raw materials travel up to 50,000 kilometers before reaching a battery manufacturing plant. However, as geopolitics, extreme weather, and soaring commodity prices threaten those supply chains, several American automakers are working hard to build and secure their own networks. China, the powerhouse. As mentioned, China leads the battery industry, producing 70% of the world's electric vehicles. Chinese automakers have been experiencing a boom as the country's middle class continues to grow, with BYD emerging as the top-selling EV brand. Meanwhile, Ford sales in China have been steadily declining since 2016. Farley stated earlier this year that Ford would need to rethink what its brand represents in the Chinese market. At a conference, Farley was unequivocal about China's dominance. As far as China is concerned, it's going to be really humbling, he said. 
The Chinese are going to be a powerhouse. Ford versus Tesla. Even with a distinct brand, beating Chinese automakers on cost is difficult, especially when their scale is five times larger. Farley added, BYD scale is now much larger than Tesla's. BYD created a critical technology, a better battery you can find. We see the Chinese as our primary competitor, not GM or Toyota. In the midst of U.S. China tech tensions, Ford's ambition to partner with Chinese battery supplier Contemporary Amperex Technology Company, Limited CATL, the world's largest lithium ion battery producer, has raised some eyebrows in the U.S. government. Big tech hostilities and future plans. The new battery plant, which will cost $3.5 billion, is set to open in Michigan in 2026. It will manufacture lithium iron phosphate, LFP, batteries, which are less expensive than nickel cobalt alternatives. In March, Republican Senator Marco Rubio sponsored legislation to prohibit tax subsidies for EV batteries built with Chinese technology. He also called on the Biden administration to review Ford's partnership with CATL. Ford plans to produce 600,000 electric vehicles per year by late 2023 and more than 2 million by the end of 2026. The company has announced that CATL will provide entire LFP battery packs for the Mustang Mach-E models in North America beginning later this year and for F-150 Lightnings beginning in early 2024. Winners in the supply chain. Ford's goal of producing 2 million EVs annually by 2026 will require a substantial amount of battery-critical materials. The company recently struck for key supply agreements, including a long-term deal with Namaska Lithium for about 13,000 tons of lithium hydroxide over an 11-year period. This agreement is expected to provide Ford customers with tax benefits under the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. There will be winners and losers in the supply chain, Farley stated. Lithium is critical. You have to have the best product strategy. But if you don't control the supply chain, you won't win. He explained Ford's ESG, environmental, social, and governance strategy by saying, It's a very complicated supply chain. It will be difficult to declare, hand on heart, that we're good. But I believe we have as excellent a procedure as anyone in the industry. Still, it will require physical oversight. Farley added that Ford was one of the first firms to develop a sustainability policy, and as a family-owned company, having a strong ESG strategy and ensuring best practices was the right thing to do. With the rapid development of electric vehicles, the need for batteries will inevitably increase. But did you know there are other battery alternatives, such as solid-state batteries? Is it better? Does it have potential for the EV world?